Hey everybody, my name is Devin Ashby. I'm Angelica Lopez. And we're super excited to talk to you guys today about finding stories on Family Search. Yes, uh, definitely learning about my family's stories have been something that have helped me a lot in my life. Recently, with everything that's been going on in the world, such as the pandemic and all the other crazy things that have been happening, um, family stories have really helped me in a lot of ways, especially um, when the pandemic became kind of personal recently. Um, I had a grandfather who passed away from COVID, um, and it was really difficult for me, of course, losing a grandparent, um, but learning about his story has helped me gain a lot of peace and understanding. Um, so in my church, we have the opportunity to serve a service mission um, for a year and a half to two years. And I thought I was the first one in my family to kind of go through that experience. And while I was serving that mission, um, I found out that my grandfather uh, actually was able to do that as well. And so I was really excited when I was going to come home and get to talk to him about that. And then I came home and his health had severely declined to the point that we weren't able to ever have that conversation. Mm -hmm. And so when he passed away a few weeks ago, I was thinking about that, like, oh, that story, that part is lost and I'm never going to get it. And after talking with a few people, I was actually able to find the place where I'm really happy and really grateful for this, but I found the slides from his mission. Whoa. where he served in Northern Germany, had to learn a whole new language. Um, and it was a difficult and hard experience for him, but it was able to be a wonderful experience for him as well. And you can see that with the slides um, that he was able, able to take on his mission. But a really cool thing too that I found out is that he was actually there when the Berlin Wall went up. So, and he wow. was in Berlin, like the actual day. Yeah, I know. Really cool, really fascinating. And it was difficult and it was hard, but through these slides, I was able to discover the story my grandfather was never able to tell me himself. And that has just brought me so much peace and so much happiness and knowing that my grandfather went through a hard, difficult thing and he was able to turn it into a wonderful experience. And so through the hard things that I might be facing right now, I can go face those difficult challenges as well. So, wow, yeah, that's an amazing story. Family <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that's super uh, sad to hear about that. But it's it's neat that you you have that connection now, and that you can you can share that together. Yes, well, it's, and definitely, it, yeah. it's definitely brought, like, happy, good, calming feelings in my life that I definitely need. So awesome. Well, that makes sense because doing stories, you know, finding them on family series, sharing them with each other, sharing them with our families. Uh, that all is part of you know why we're here today and what we're going to talk about. It makes sense that you talk about that connection with your grandpa because there is a huge piece of um, research that's coming out and more and more all the time that's saying that there are a lot of psychological benefits to doing family history and how that builds resilience and why that matters. And like you're saying, and not just maybe sharing the good stuff, but all the stuff that was you know maybe a little bit difficult. So that's that's interesting. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yes. <laughs> So now let's talk a little bit about some of these psychological benefits to family stories. Again, we're trying to talk about how we can find family stories on familysearch.org. Some of them will be there, but a lot of them actually won't because they're from us, right? They come out of who we are. So now let's talk a little bit more about family stories, right? We're trying to find those on family search, but you have to keep in mind that some of the stories like Angelica will just mentioned, uh, those aren't on family search yet, right? Those are in Angelica's, you know, present, right, in what she's going through right now. And a lot of what we have, what you and I will have, will be stuff that Family Search doesn't have, which is good because that's part of our family narrative and who we are. I'm going to share a quick uh, article with everybody here. And it's on the Family Search blog. And the title is Building Resilience, Three Science-Backed Ways to Find Healing. Now, there's a ton of research, as I mentioned, there's more and more coming out all the time that says that those that mo know the most about their family story, their family history can build better resilience and develop a, a really strong uh, family narrative. So I won't go through this whole article, but I'm gonna talk about uh, these things really briefly. Uh, there's a link in here to an article from Bruce Feiler from 2013. It's called The Stories That Bind Us, where he goes in and looks at different families and he cites a lot of uh, research coming out of Emory University uh, over in Georgia. And what they did is they did a do you know scale. Some academics developed a scale and then they asked children different questions. 
Uh, and as the kids answered these questions, they, find, they found out that those that knew the most about their family history and about their family story were the ones that were better um, equipped to handle stress because of the resilience that, uh, that they built. Some of the questions were like, do you know uh, the origin of your name? Do you know where your parents met? Do you know uh, a profession of one of your grandparents? Things like that. Uh, pretty simple uh, family-based questions. One of the things Bruce talks about too in the article that we have here in this, uh, this, this blog piece here is there's a couple of different ty types of narratives. There's an ascending narrative, right? We had nothing, we worked really hard and now, and now we made it. The descending narrative, we had everything and then we lost it all. Um, many of us, perhaps even listening to this class may have powerful stories in our family history of ancestors that immigrated, left their homelands, left uh, what they knew and loved and went overseas. Uh, you know, years and years ago to lots of different countries, right? I have a lot of that in my family history. And then oscillating narratives, the balance of both, right? The descending and the ascending narratives. And one of the things Bruce mentioned is that one of the things we can do to build stronger families might be the simplest of all, and that's build a strong family narrative, right? And so this oscillating, right? The good and the not so good, the, the it was great and it was really hard are, super, super important. And Angelica, you mentioned a way that you connected with your grandpa. We can find those connections as well. But I think it's important as we look at our family stories, we don't just tell the good stuff where we had it all and we nailed it and nothing ever, you know, the rosy stuff. A lot of times we feel that's what everybody wants to hear, but there's good in struggle, right? The good and mm -hmm. the hard, and we need, we need both, right? Yes, I think just going to what your point was, is that when I realized that both parts of that story was there where he went through difficult times, but he also overcame them and was able to find joy through the difficulties he went through, it made it really relatable to me. It helped me feel more grounded and it helped me realize like, okay, I'm going through a hard time right now, but just like how my grandpa went through a hard time, he was able to make it through okay and I can do the same thing too. So I definitely felt that narrative and the strength through that, like what you were just describing. Perfect, all right, that's a great example. So here are a couple of the narratives. I'm gonna click on this button right here, that research link, it takes you over to Bruce's article. He also came uh, a couple years ago and actually spoke at Roots Tech. So you can go on the YouTube and find Bruce's talk uh, at Roots Tech from a couple years ago. And he talks about all of this for about 25 minutes. It's really, really wonderful. So that's a little bit about um, building resilience and why that matters in family stories. No, I definitely think that's true. And I think there's in simple, short ways we can understand and connect with our families. And we can figure out how learning about those stories really helps us and grounds us like what you were just describing. So thank you for sharing that, Devin. Yeah. So kind of just building off of what you just talked about, Devin, and what these great benefits are, I just was thinking about how can I simply describe like how this was able to help me? And I think there's kind of two things to it. I think first that um, realizing that like the past of my grandfather helped me face the present and the issues that I was dealing with. So that was kind of like one thing that really stood out to me. And then also my grandpa went from being someone that I just had all these old slides of to story that helped me realize that he was a real person and that he had a life before he was my grandpa that just gave me money and treats all the time. He wasn't like, always <laughs> old, right? He wasn't always just in grandpa mode. Yes, exactly. But that I was able to connect with him and I was able to understand the person or story that was inside of him. And so I know for sure that I'm definitely going to take these slides and I'm going to upload them to family search and help share that with other people so that's discoverable for other people. Um, so one thing I'm going to do real quickly is I'm just going to show how people can go and find the stories that are there and how they can also add their own stories as well. So one of the really simple and easy ways to start seeing and learning about what stories are being added to your family tree through our great community that we have on familysearch.org um, can be right when you just sign in. So all you do is you just click the sign in button and then go ahead and sign in. And then when you do that, it has this great little feed that will come up that you'll be able to see what people are already adding to your family tree. So I already have these great, awesome photos that other people have been so great to start adding to my tree. And so I can start seeing right away pictures as well as some records, some headstones of 
different ancestors that I have. This is actually um, from my grandfather's side who just passed away. So that's pretty exciting. Hmm. Um, as well, some written out stories. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can get just there's by going just right, right there. Through. Yeah, they're just all sitting right here waiting for you to discover. So I love that. It's very easy, simple for you to start learning about the stories during your family. Um, as well, you can go to the memories experience. It's up here on the left. You click this tab and click gallery. It'll bring you to a page like this. And to um, kind of explore what content there already is in your family tree. Um, or you can just start adding um, your own memories by clicking this giant plus button up here. And this is where I'm going to start uploading and putting my grandfather's slides up on Family Search after I get them digitized. So all you have to do is just click choose files from your computer. Um, and then also you can just add um, photos from Instagram, Facebook, or Google photos. And one thing I just want to bring up is that I don't think for a moment, my grandfather thought when he was taking those photos, he was like, oh, I'm living history right now. And <laughs> I want my posterity or in the future, my granddaughter to see these photos. So I think it's important to remember that we are living history right now. So whether you read it or not, your Instagram feed, your Facebook feed, your Google photos, that's the documentation of your family story. So that's something really important to remember. So that way you realize that you're living history now. So it's important to say what you have right now. Well, and if you do anything on Facebook, Instagram or Google photos or, what, or any of those social platforms, you're basically digital journaling anyways. Yes. Right? Exactly. The, the interactions are maybe a little bit richer because people can comment and share and like and all that stuff, which is really cool. But Facebook basically is family history. Yes, exactly. It is. And so by just adding it simply this way, you're able to connect it to the tree so it's not lost forever. And anyone in your posterity can come back and easily find those photos. And as well, you can go back and find those photos and that content really easily. Cool. And then um, the last kind of thing um, that I wanted to share is up here is if you go to the family tree tab and if you click the tree button um a fan chart option in this drop down menu um it'll sh bring you to this location so this is my great grandmother's tree um but also there's some really cool filters that are easy ways for you to start finding out your family story so the first one i kind of want to show is um, the birth country filter. This, so this is my great grandmother's side. Um, I might not look it, but I'm actually very Danish. So, <laughs> um, so this is really cool. I did not realize how Danish I was until I started going through this feature um, as well. Just realizing I had like a rich British colonial American history that I didn't know that I had. Um, so there's just some really cool fun things as well. I found it as well that I had an ancestor who was born while crossing the Atlantic. So I thought that was really cool. So there's some cool fun stories you can find out that way um, as well. Stories that have already been written, um, the richer the ancestor's history is with stories, the darker yellow it gets. So these are some ancestors that already have some stories that I can start learning about. It looks like there's and a lot as well, of photos and have had new stories too, right? If it's, if it's yeah. pretty white, there's yeah. a lot of people might say, well, somebody's done all my family history. Well, it looks like maybe not in the story space, right? It's probably true for a lot of us. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is that everybody has a story, no mm -hmm. matter if they're your direct ancestor or not, everyone has a story. Everyone's lived a life. And because they live that life, there is strength in that story because they were able to live and persevere at some level. And so there is strength in every family tree. So even if the person doesn't have stories recorded um, here on Family Search, that's because they're waiting for you to record their stories. Mm -hmm. So um, just, uh, my grandfather might not have any memories already. He will have some very soon by me just uploading and adding those stories. Those are some great ideas, Angelica. Thanks for sharing those. Uh, it's cool to see how simple it can be to find some family stories on Family Search. One of the mm -hmm. simplest ways just might be by signing in and scrolling through that feed like you showed. Well, I want to share exactly. a quick story about one of my family members. And it's hopefully a story that can encourage us to share, right? A lot of us think, well, I might not have something very interesting. But as we fill in, like Angelica was showing, fill in those stories 
and maybe our that fan chart can become a little bit darker with the stories. We can all do stories. We can all do memories. We can all do photos like like Angelica said. A couple of years ago, I was uh, just working and I got a message in my Gmail from somebody I didn't know. And it was so strange because the person said, hey, I think I have something that might belong to you or something you might be interested in. And she said that she was a student up at USU and she found something and would I be interested in? So I <laughs> replied back in the email and I said, I'd be very interested. Uh, what is it? She said in an email, she replies back and she says, well, I was going to a class up here at Utah State University and I was learning about how you can learn about your family on eBay. And she said, there's places you can go and look for heirlooms and look for antiques and look for different things. And she said, I didn't find anything there about my family, but I decided to go downtown in Logan and look at some of the thrift shops to see what I could find. She's like, when I was there, I found this photo and it was this photo of a beautiful young woman, young woman. And I just had this feeling that I should buy it. And I bought it. It was a couple of dollars and I just had this feeling I should buy it. But I didn't know who it was. And so I took the frame off and I looked on the back and found out that her name was Eunice Peterson. And so I thought, well, where could I find out who this person belongs to? She said, I went to family search and I found out that you had uploaded a story about her and I have the photo and I want to know <laughs> if you want it. Oh my goodness. And I, said, I said, yes, I would love it. And so now I'll share my screen and you can see this, uh, this photo. The photo of this beautiful young woman is now on our, let's see it here. It's on our <laughs> piano. And this was very, very meaningful to me because I hadn't seen this photo before. And it was amazing to me that somebody could just randomly go into a shop uh, in, a, in another town and find a family photo and purchase it and then look on Family Search and find that connection to me because I had written a story about her, I compiled a story about her. And so <laughs> I, couldn't end, I couldn't go up to Logan at that time, but my aunt went over who lives up there and she went and picked it up. And then I eventually got up there and got it. But I think that's just a powerful reminder of the ways that stories can connect us. And even if you um, might not feel like you're super skilled in family history or genealogy, if you upload photos, of family members, you can connect into all kinds of different people who might find that you care about that family member and might buy photos, might find something and might connect with you. The more you share, the more you receive. And I think that's the, the principle, the, the important thing I learned from this story is I had no idea who this woman was up in Logan, but because I had shared something about my family, we now have this beautiful photo uh, on our piano. So you never know what kind of stories you can find on Family Search, and you never know who's on Family Search trying to find you and maybe making that connection. No, really, though, I really appreciate you sharing that because I think you highlighted a point where, like, I don't think when you were compiling that story that you were expecting to no find idea. the photo. And also, um, just by that young woman who was able to find you on Family Search, you were able to create this great connection, and now you have that photo of this ancestor that you wouldn't have had before. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important thing as well is to realize that um, we have stories to share and we have stories to offer, even if we think we don't. Even if we think, oh, well, my tree's completely empty or all the work's been done, everything that's ever been done or said about an ancestor is all up there. It's all done, all complete. I think that's not true when it comes to stories. If you're alive right now, you have a story. Mm -hmm. And if you have an ancestor that lived in the past, they have a story. And so there is strength and power that can be found in those stories and in any family tree. All we have to do is just be willing to learn about them and be willing to share them and be willing to upload and share our own stories so that we can create this connection like what you described in yours and then also what I described in mine, because mm -hmm. that's really when our ancestors go from just being photos, but becoming real people, or how we're able to realize what's happened in the past is helping us in the present. So I really appreciate you sharing that. And hopefully today we were able to help all of you realize that you have a story to share, your ancestors have a story to share, and there's strength in those stories. 
and that's why we need to share them. So right. thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> yeah, thanks for joining. Hopefully this was helpful. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thanks.